problem with being a kid today is you grow up too quickly. There's just not enough time. Well, for some kids, that is. <laughs> This time. Horrible histories. Wow. Horrible histories. Who would do that? A smart, hungry caveman. Good idea. Have any of you seen a girl about so tall, big, uh, cartoony eyes? Oh, you gotta go. You gotta go. And where's Stitch? I can't find him anywhere. Wow. Socrates rocks. Is that the Spanish Armada? Horrible histories. Horrible histories. Horrible histories. Well, Mo, what do you think about all this cool old stuff? We're history. is a definite win-win. School's canceled, and look at all this snow to play in. Hey, where did all that come from? Ow! <laughs> from the king in his castle. You had better build yourself a castle. If you're not a sitting king, you're a sitting duck. Quack, quack. <laughs> Stitch, I say we crown King Dongle. No way, Mo. As long as he's in that fortress, he can blast us all day long. Let's go home. Giving up so easily? Why not just build your own fortress? With what? Dongle's got an electric generator, snow blowers, a snow cannon. And we got mittens. And an extra stick of gum. Well, it's a start. The world's most impressive structures were created with the most rudimentary things. All it took was a little ingenuity and organization. And let me guess. We're going to get sucked through time right about now. And you'll be better off because of it. <laughs> man, I'm not just like a man. What's up with this? Where are we? Good old Amarna, Egypt, 1335 BCE, when the Egyptians told time with sundials and the first harp was made and played. Yeah, but they haven't gotten around to making pants. No, no, no! But, Your Highness, I see nothing wrong with my plans. Amen, Raman, the idea is to enjoy this party. If I used those plans, it would be boring. And you, why are you two not bowing before me? Easy, you're just a kid. I am Tutankhamun, the king. Right, and I'm Sheena, queen of the Nile. <laughs> uh, forget that, I was just kidding. Well, I am not kidding. Tutankhamun. <gasps> Stitch, this is the King Tut. Yeah, the kid who had the tomb with all the great stuff in it. Right you are, Stitch. Tutankhamun's the ten-year-old ruler over all of Egypt. Better bow. <laughs> Sorry for the misunderstanding, Your Highness. We're just here to find out how you guys do things without advanced technology. Er, I mean, big tools and stuff. Why would slaves need to know such things? Hey, easy with that talk. We're not slaves. Of course you are, or you'd be wearing wigs. Take mine, for instance. This is the wig of my father, the great Akhenaten, the king of Upper and Lower Egypt. Good hands! I know what it's like to have a bad hair day. Let me fix that for you. By the snout of Tefnut, you slaves are quick-footed and clever. How would you like to earn your freedom? Would we get lunch, too? Be my chief advisors and plan a party. The celebration of the arrival of flood season! You party for a flood? Wouldn't there be a lot of death and destruction with that? 
No, no. The Nile River's annual flood makes our fields fertile and helps feed my empire. It's the most important event of the year. If it's a theme party, we could all wear life preservers. Thanks, but no thanks. Why don't you go for it? You'll get to see the sights. And besides, it's the least you can do for Tutankhamun. This poor kid isn't going to be around in another eight years. So up. Uh, never mind. Okay, we'll do it. Great. If I left it to my chief advisor, Amon Raman, this party would be as much fun as a locust infestation. I want a party that's fun for kids like us. Replace me with slaves, will he? I must dispose of them. Take this cartouche, my seal. It will allow you to buy anything you need to make my party a success. Awesome! An aging credit card. I will give you until the jackals come down from the hills tomorrow evening. Don't disappoint me. How can you tell which end is up with all this chicken scratch? Here, those are hieroglyphics. The Egyptians use pictures instead of letters in their alphabet. I think that one's the Ankh in Tut Ankh Amun. Right you are, Stitch. 5,000 years ago, the Egyptians wrote with over 600 picture signs or hieroglyphs. Nobody could figure out what the picture characters meant until the discovery of the Rosetta Stone in 1799. This stone told the same story in three different alphabets, Greek, official Egyptian, and everyday Egyptian hieroglyphics. By comparing the three, the mystery of the pictures was solved and the language decoded. This vulture stood for the letter A, and this viper represented the letter F. Ahmed, how many times have I told you? I before eagle, except after seagull. Sheesh. Everyone says our best bet for a party location is upriver. But how are we supposed to get there? Ruffy's Nile Tours, reasonable prices, and your service. What luck! This is gonna be easy. Take us somewhere we can throw a big party. Cost is no object. <sighs> I know the perfect place. This is Hatshepsut's temple. Isn't it magnificent? So, how many bulldozers you think it took to build this place? Not one bulldozed on this job. They were too busy hauling the huge stones. <laughs> if they throw the party here, the king will put their heads in olive oil jars. Just wait and see. Well, I'm sold. I don't know, Mo. Something about this place gives me the creeps. Nah, it's just the lousy music those guys are playing. Say, Palio, uh, that tune is a tad grim. How about playing something loud and upbeat? Not here, Sahib. Osiris would curse you for a hundred generations. Sounds cranky. But what if we just talk to this Osiris guy? Impossible. He's the god of the underworld. This place is sacred. It is a mortuary. Come again? It is a mortuary. Oh, yeah! Osiris was the Egyptian god who rules over the dead! You mean this is a... graveyard? Oh, yes. Hatshepsut, the first woman to be made pharaoh, is buried within. Ew! We can't throw a party in a graveyard! That would freak! Come on, Stitch, we're out of here! Any other ideas, Rafi? Well, that is always the Temple of Karnak. No one is buried there, and it is just across the river. Man, it's still hot. Why don't you dangle your feet in the river? It's just a thing for beating the heat. Hey, yeah! Great idea! <laughs> Today's blue plate special, Pato Child a la Hippopotamus. Switch! 
No, no, no! Uh, look, foolish children. You dip for a long time, not short dips. Long dips, you see? My sweat is... Ooh! Ah! Don't worry, Rafi. We'll get help. I've seen worse. Good thing you brought him in when you did. We wouldn't want that to fester. Rafi, we'll check in to see how you're doing once we found a spot for the party. And we've still got to find out how to build a fortress better than Dongle. Right, Mo? Mo? I hope we did the right thing for Rafi. What kind of treatment do you think he'll get? Oh, come on, Mo. It's 1335 BCE. He'll be lucky to get a few spells and a dash of mumbo-jumbo. Wrong, Stitch. Egypt has already been a thriving civilization for 2,000 years, and in that time, they've developed an impressive body of medical knowledge. If an Egyptian doctor fried a catfish head in oil and applied the hot, greasy goo to the affected area on your body, what would you be suffering from? A. Chronic constipation B. Migraine headache or C. Chapped lips if you had guessed B, migraine headache, congratulations! You're on your way to practicing medicine in ancient Egypt. Some of their cures might sound weird, but doctors in ancient Egypt really knew their stuff. They used sutures for wounds, splints for broken bones, and even mapped the human circulatory system. Okay, I feel much better. Thanks. Check it out! The Temple of Karnak! With its grand hall and 134 pillars, this temple is the largest building with pillars and hallways ever constructed. Looks like plenty of room for party guests. You got that right. See the beams on those pillars? Each one weighs more than an Indian elephant. They stand seven elephants high and two elephants across. And 100 people could stand on top of each one. Yeah, but there wouldn't be enough room for all of them to dance. <clears throat> the point is, this massive structure was built without cranes, motors, hydraulics, electricity, or even iron tools. <laughs> okay, this we need to know. Without fancy equipment, how'd they build this place? See for yourselves. <clears throat> oh, look at all the workers! Check it out, Mo. They're using a lever and fulcrum. What the Egyptians lacked in technology, they made up for with manpower and ingenuity. Ahem. <clears throat> Person power and ingenuity. So if you don't have the tools... You just get more help. So uh, where'd they get all these workers? <laughs> They're actually slaves. They were housed by the government and were paid for their labor in food. We can't throw the party here. It's not finished yet. But maybe that guy feeding the workers could cater it. <laughs> Rafi, what are you doing here? You should be in bed. <laughs> you don't say. So, what can you do for us in our party, Hakeem? <laughs> Please, not so loud. I have a headache the size of the Sphinx. Hakim serves nothing but the best for flawed celebrations. Everybody eats this stuff and no one gets sick. I tried preparing something nice for Amon Roman, the king's wicked advisor, but he spit on my shoes and laughed in my face. <laughs> Sounds like a creep. Okay, so we got lettuce, onions, leeks, and cucumbers. Mm, and figs for dessert. Oh, and you must not forget the local favorite, yummy fried dormouse. Gross. What about real meat? Meat? Beef and mutton is only for royalty. Good. Add enough steaks to feed, oh, say a thousand. How do ye slave children expect to pay for all this? Cartouche blanche. Oh, for the king himself? I'll rat you up a bill right away. And one more thing. Are there any good party locations around here? Hmm. Everyone is talking about the Temple of Luxor. Thanks, Hakeem. We'll let you know where to deliver the food. You coming, Rafi? Oh, uh, uh, that is better. 
I think we found our party spot, Stitch. Good choice. The Temple of Luxor here in Thebes is the religious center of the Empire. This should be enough room for me to show off my dance moves. Enjoy it while you can, my innocent friends. Soon the party will be over for you. Yep, this is the perfect place to spread out the dinner. And there is your dinner, my pet. Sorry, Mo, we can't put the food here. Why not? See that carving there on the wall? I'm pretty sure that's the god of uh, regurgitation. Stitch. Just be grateful I didn't munch on the fried dormouse. So, the drinks can go here, and the veggie dip over there. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Bite them. Bite them. Ah! Rafi! You saved us! That's gotta really hurt. Your friend is lucky it was a very old cobra. Not much poison. Poor Rafi's got so many bandages, he looks like a mummy. With one very important distinction, he's still alive. The ancient Egyptians believed that when someone died, their soul survived. And in order to pass into the afterlife, the body needed to be kept in good shape to make the journey. So, the internal organs were removed and placed in special containers called canopic jars to lock in freshness. His brain was removed too, but it was tossed away or fed to the animals. The brain, after all, wasn't thought to be a very useful organ. The body was then dried, coated with resins, and later wrapped in hundreds of yards of linen. Here's some extra gauze in case your clumsy friend has any more accidents. Ralphie, we're all set for the big party. Thanks to you, we're going to look like a big success to the king. No, it isn't possible. I mean, I, it isn't possible without games. Games? Well, what about games? In Tutankhamun's day, kids in Egypt played marbles using pieces of stone or marble from construction sites. If they couldn't find anything else, they used fruit pits. <coughs> It just would not be a real party without games. But we're out of time. What'll we do? Uh, uh, oh, allow me to uh, help you. N no, 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 Rafi. You've already done too much. <coughs> Nonsense. I'll take you to a place where there are lots of games. The biggest selection of games for the afterlife is right in there. The Pyramid of Khufu. That's the Great Pyramid. We're going inside? Heavy! Yep, about six million tons heavy. Positioned behind the Sphinx at 756 feet square and 481 feet high, the Great Pyramid of Khufu is the largest solid stone structure in the world. There is so much stone here, it's been estimated that if you cut it all into two and a half inch rods, you'd have enough to reach the moon. assuming it stayed balanced. According to Greek historian Herodotus, it took 400,000 men 20 years to build this colossal tomb, a tomb laced with secret passageways, dead ends, and deadly traps. But after all that time and energy, it didn't take nearly as long for tomb thieves to find passages to crawl inside and remove all the treasures. Aren't we kind of doing the same thing? What do you mean? 
were raiding a tomb to remove its treasures. So very observant, and like many tomb raiders you have just walked into... A trap! Rafi, what's the matter? We were gonna give you a big tip. <laughs> Not rat. I am Amin Ramen. <gasps> King Tut's wicked advisor! Oh yeah? I gotta tell you, your advice really stinks, buddy. <laughs> when I take credit for all your work on this party, I'll return to Tut's favor while you spend all eternity in a tomb! <laughs> We could starve in here! Maybe not. I think there's some kind of jam or jelly in here. Actually, that's a canopic jar containing a dead pharaoh's internal organs. Yeah! yeah. Let's start looking for an escape tunnel, okay? Whoa! I think we found one! to throw. Yeah, Amon Ramen isn't gonna get credit for our work. Look! It's him! The weasel. What's the plan? Guys. Amon Ramen. Oh, you! You're dead! What do you want of me? Revenge for sticking us in a tomb! <laughs> well, I guess that's all wrapped up. Slave Stitch! Slave Mo! I am so pleased with the party that I will grant you your freedom! <sighs> Thanks, Your Highness. Oh, and you must meet my wife! Wife? Yep, young marriages were quite common in 1335 BCE. Uncas and Pommen, these are my glorious party planners. Ooh, I just love the new game Pin the Brain and the Mommy. It is the best. Yeah, silly, but cerebral. In the ultimate land of monuments, I think we just pulled off a monumental task. And now we know how these people built using only the most basic tools and a little ingenuity. Here we come, Dongo. <laughs> Long live King Dongo! Come on, we can outdo Dongo. Yeah, just takes a little ingenuity. And a lot of manpower. Eh, eh, person? Correction, person power. Ready? Aim! Fire! <laughs> How dare you! This really stinks, you know! Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh, correction! It really... Don't say it, Maul. Sphinx! 